Much of the regulation of the blood which arrives at a given tissue occurs with the vasoconstriction and vasodilation of the smooth muscle of small blood vessels in the tissue, especially the precapillary sphincters located in capillary beds. This is referred to as autoregulation because this control is not determined by faraway vents in the brain or spinal cord or by hormones secreted by distant glands, but rather regulatory elements in the tissue itself. So for example, there is a myogenic mechanism in which the smooth muscle will respond to pressure in the blood vessel, where if the pressure is low, it will dilate, allowing more blood to flow, while if the pressure is high, it will constrict, causing less blood to flow. This is regulation at the tissue level performed by elements in the tissue itself. In addition, there are a number of other signals which cause vasodilation and the flow of more blood into a tissue, such as nitric oxide. In the heart, adenosine is a powerful vasodilator. Since tissues rely on this blood flow for gas exchange and to remove acid, low concentrations of oxygen, high concentrations of carbon dioxide, and high acid concentrations cause vasodilation and thus more blood flow. A number of inflammatory signals such as histamine uh, dilate blood vessels bringing more immune cells and more blood into an injured tissue. There are also signals which are vasoconstrictors, such as the endothelins, which are powerful vasoconstrictors. And then also during an injury, there can be clotting factors which cause the vascular spasm, limiting blood flow to a wounded area. And so much of the regulation of blood flow to tissues and ultimately even affecting blood pressure, uh, much of this regulation is autoregulation performed by the tissues themselves.